Here's a sample episode of Roadkill Extra that shows up every single weekday at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. We've got outtakes, question and answer sessions, behind the scenes stuff, tech tips, all sorts of junk related to Roadkill. Check it out every weekday at Motor Trend On Demand. Freiberger here and I'm on the set of an episode of Roadkill Garage where we're doing a showdown between Dulcich's D100 pickup and their original Roadkill muscle truck. And today is also the day right after the Roadkill zip tie drags. It's an event that we held in Tucson, Arizona and my voice is shredded from screaming on the microphone all day. It was an amazing event. And when we did the event, we did that shootout between the two trucks and this thing ran 1310 and on a different pass it went 109 miles an hour. The 1310 pass was 105. So with the highway gears in the back and everything, I was super stoked with that. I thought I would take it as an opportunity to give you a deeper inside look at the ever popular muscle truck. This is one of our most asked about vehicles and it's been in a lot of shows and extras and social media and stuff like that, but you don't always get to see every little nitty gritty detail about it. So I'm going to try and show you some things now that maybe you haven't seen before and don't know. First of all, um, I was surprised at the event how many people asked me, is this a 73 or a 74? Not that critical, it's like exactly the same truck, but I checked the title and it's a 74. I think the confusion comes from the fact that I misspeak often when I'm talking about it. Sometimes I've called it a 73, sometimes I've said 74, but it actually is a 74. The thing though is that this thing is patched together from a bunch of trucks. When I bought it, the guy was restoring it and had actually had the frame off the cab and everything, had sandblasted and powder coated the chassis. The underside of this thing is truly mint. It's nice. But uh, these fenders, you know that we hacked these in an episode of Roadkill, and so these are replacement fenders. The fenders that we hacked, they were also aftermarket fenders. It's an original hood, which doesn't have the kink in it that most of these trucks do. Usually the hood hinges seize up, and there's a dent right across the middle of the hood that folds in half. Uh, it's got two different doors off two different trucks. This one's actually off of a later model. You can tell it's like weird. It's got thinner glass and slightly thinner sheet metal than the other one because it's from a newer truck. Uh, and then the bed came from a completely different vehicle. Here's something that I found out a couple years ago that blew me away. Um, I stuck my hand up in here on the inside and found out that there's a weld mark right here on both sides. And I assume here, my conclusion being that this top came off of a different cab, which is kind of strange. But the guy did it really well. You can't tell from out here. I think the color of this cab was originally red. If you look up under the dash, that's what you can see. But obviously the rest of the truck is a multitude of colors. Uh, the big roadkill sticker on the back window, people ask about that all of the time. People want to buy that thing. And we don't sell them because they're expensive to make and expensive to ship. Uh, that was just a one-off that I had done at a local shop. So that's where that came from. Um, good backstory on this fender. This whole truck was originally built when I was doing a thing called Car Junkie TV. And one of our roadkill directors, Dustin Gould, was also working at Car Junkie TV. That's where I met him and that's how we started doing uh, roadkill together. And we built this truck initially, me and Chad Reynolds, and did a cross-country trip to the second LS Fest in Memphis with it. Um, but Dustin actually painted this fender. It's like one of the few things, automotive things that he's done for the show. And he was obsessed with trying to mask off the uh, pinstripe on it. So this is not like a, a tape stripe. It's actually, the fender was primer gray and he masked it off and put, uh, I, I forget the brand of this metallic orange, but it's actually lasted pretty well because that was about nine years ago. And this right here, the black spot, which I notice when people mimic the muscle truck, either in toy cars or in real trucks, they'll always put this black spot here. This was a Car Junkie TV logo that he had also masked into it. And then you see there's more goo on it, and there's goo sticker leftovers everywhere on the truck. When we took this on power tour last year, we got into a sticker war with Rutledge Wood. We put roadkill stickers all over his Toyota, and we came out one morning and there was Rutledge stickers all over the truck. And they left some goo and they peeled some paint off. Um, Right here in the bed, there's some green. We considered painting the truck at one time. And this was uh, some spray can green that we actually thought about doing it. Thank goodness we did not. Um, 
You know that we changed the wood in the bed on an episode of Hot Rod Garage, and we also made this thing, which we obviously did not paint and is rusting. That is covering the kick up in the frame that has a C notch in the back. And let me think if there's anything else I need to tell you about the body on it. I don't think so. The other thing people ask about all of the time on this is what is the wheel and tire package? So let's figure that out. Um, these are Krager Soft 8 wheels. They're really cheap. I use them all the time. Finnegan hates them. Um, and this is a 285 6017 on the back. It's almost 31 inches tall. It's a huge tire, but narrow enough to fit in there. And I don't remember the backspace on these wheels, but it kind of doesn't matter if you're building a truck like this because the rear end in this thing isn't even Chevy. It came out of a 78 F100, complete full width. I don't even know what the width is, but it might be different than a Chevy and it might affect what the backspacing is. So even if I told you the number, it might not even apply to a Chevy. And the same is true with the front backspacing. It's all weird with spacers and a bunch of stuff. Um, and the other wheel and tire package that fits on this on the drag strip is this. This is a Wheel Vintiques, just original steel wheel looking thing. It's a 15 by 8 and it's wearing a 30 by 12 50 15 um, ET Street. This is the old kind of ET Street they don't make anymore. Um, let's see what the front tire size is on this pile. It's a 225 55 17 again on a 17 by 8. And because the rear end came from a Ford, it's got a Ford wheel bolt pattern. And so this has an adapter on it to go from the Chevy pattern to the Ford pattern. And that adapter feels like it's also a roughly a one inch spacer. So it's moving the whole thing out. Now, the front suspension on this is a two inch drop spindle. And the upper control arm is from Ride Tech. And the lower control arm is from CPP. It's like a mishmash of parts. It's got McGaughy's shocks. I never know how to pronounce that company's name. And Dulcich just set this thing up with regular old mechanical coil springs last week. It had air ride on it for a long time, but this truck ends up getting driven by so many people who couldn't figure out how to work the air ride system. And one of our assistants who doesn't know anything about cars tried to drive it with the front end dragging the ground, and I was just over it. And so it's now got uh, coil springs on it to keep it simple for those guys. Um, let's see what's, oh, this grill. Um, notice it says 454 in the grill. The muscle truck is not an original big block truck. This grill came from a uh, gardener's truck that I bought years ago. I mean, like in the mid 90s to pull a 454 out of it. And I still had the, the grill sitting around. When I bought the truck, it had a tube grill in it. So under the hood, this is an all aluminum Corvette LS6. And it's stock with the exception of a little crane camshaft that I don't remember the specs on. It has crane roller rockers on it. Um, it does have mid-length headers and a BBK SSI uh, cast aluminum intake manifold that a lot of people complain about because it retains a lot of heat versus the plastic manifolds. Um, it is controlled by MSD Atomic EFI and we've got a nitrous plate on it and a couple solenoids over here, but the rest of the nitrous system is not hooked up anymore. It's got aeromotive fuel system. You can see the regulator here on this little custom bracket that I made off of the frame. And of course, Optima battery. Here's the roll control that Dulcich made a bracket for on a recent episode of Roadkill Garage. You should actually look up that episode. There's a lot more on the muscle truck there. And while filthy right now from driving to and from Arizona and everything, you can tell that the inside of the engine compartment was actually painted up and dealt with pretty nicely at one time. Um, back to the drivetrain. Uh, the transmission is a dynamic turbo 400. It's a full manual valve body. It's got about a 4,000 stall converter in it, which is a little loose for driving around, especially when we put highway gears in the back. Right now I have a 350 rear gear in it and it has a gear vendors overdrive. And so 80 miles an hour is about 3,100 RPM. No problem cruising it all day that way. It has gotten as good as 20 miles per gallon. Let's see if there's any interior details. Oh, people ask me where the steering wheel came from all the time, which is weird to me because it just looks like a leftover. 
As Brad comes around to show you the interior, I will say forgive the road trip disaster inside this thing. Look at all those blankets and junk and food. Pretty normal for making a big long road trip. The steering wheel um, actually came off a 70 Buick GS455, but it is the same as a 70 Chevelle upgrade factory steering wheel. So you can actually buy that thing from like original parts group or other reproduction sources year one. I used to have a G-Tech tachometer in the muscle truck, um, but when we converted the thing to fuel injection and everything, it has a bunch of features in that G-Tech tack that I wasn't using, and it had gotten kind of scratched up, so I changed it to that Autometer Street tack, same one that is in the Crop Duster. I, I like that tack, it's just real basic. You can see the controller for the MSD EFI over there hanging off the dash, that red screen. Um, this seat came out of a junkyard. I remember carrying it out of the yard by myself in the rain to put that together. Recently, we made the cab of this thing much more comfortable with a uh, new carpet and a uh, jute pad and underlie from LMC Truck. And I also dynamatted the inside of the doors. We added a Pioneer stereo in the dash. It also has six by nine speakers in both doors and in a couple of enclosures behind the seat. And so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, the truck is so loud that even with that thing fully cranked, the exhaust just kills all of the high notes. And I need to get some tweeters up on the dash or something because they're so directional because the exhaust is so loud. And that's the last thing I'll tell you about. The number one thing people ask about on the muscle truck is what do I have for exhaust? So here is that. It's got the mid-length headers on it, which have a ball type two and a half inch uh, collector on them. And we've got that stepped up into three inch tube, which goes back to a four inch Dynamax bullet muffler that's only about that long. And then steps back down to three inch tube and goes into dumps right ahead of the axle. And it does not have a crossover pipe. And that is the secret to the shrieking famous exhaust sound of the muscle truck. Let's give you some of that right now as I head out. Kill Extra, go sign up for the 30-day free trial right now.